Jonathan Kaback, CEO of Oliver Hazard Perry, Rhode Island. The operator of Rhode Island's flagship, the SSV Oliver Hazard Perry. I know what you're thinking. All the cool stuff happens up there. So let's come on board. Welcome to the quarterdeck, where all the excitement starts. This is where we steer the ship and control the ship's engines. Come take a quick peek. Inside this box, we have everything from our engine controls, an electronic chart, to our radio to communicate with other ships. Hi, I'm Georgia, I'm the second mate. I'm in charge of navigation, communications, and safety for the SSV Oliver Hazard Perry. I do most of my work right here in the nav shack. Check it out. I have all my charts and all my gear to do plotting and piloting. I can look at my chart plotters, see what's going on around me, figure out where we are with our GPS and other information. I have radar, both X and S band, so that I can keep track of all the other people and make sure we don't run into anything or anybody. And this is where I focus on situational awareness so I know where we are, where we're going, who's around us and where they're heading, and we keep our ship safe that way. Back to you, Jonathan. While lots of things happen back here on the quarterdeck, there are so many other really fascinating parts of the ship that we'd love you to take a look at. Before we head down below, let's take a look at our weather deck. Our ship's rig, starting up at the bow, has a bowsprit and jaboom. We've got a foremast, a mainmast, and a mizzenmast. Along with that, up on deck, all the way aft, we have our quarter deck where Jonathan was talking to you, and then the nav shack right next to that, and then going forward, an aft cabin with a head. We have our midships cabin called our sea lab. That's where we have a lab for training, and the weather deck is where we do our sailing. We'll meet the deck crew in a few minutes. The next deck down, our tween decks, or between decks, we have our great cabin, our galley, and our mess, a series of staterooms, a library, and a bosun's locker. Down below that, we have our engineering deck, where we have our main engines, our auxiliary engine room, a 16, a 12, and an eight-man berth. We'll take a look at those as well. Now that you've seen the quarter deck and the nav shack, let's go down below and check out the rest of the ship, meet some more of the crew, and see what they're up to. We'll leave our quarter deck and head down around and aft into our great cabin. This is our great cabin. This is where we relax, where we hold ship meetings, musters, and training for both the crew and for trainees that come on board. Heading forward on the tween decks, past engineering, we get to the crew mess where we eat, and of course, the galley where we do all our cooking and our steward department is currently cooking lunch. From here, we'll move forward down into the engineering deck where the 16-man berth is located. We also have a 12-man berth and an eight-man berth that are very similar, just sized differently. Then our ship's office, we do all our paperwork. And moving forward, we enter our library and our media room. So this is where we keep all our books and our training materials, as well as creating all the videos like this one right here. And don't forget to check out the OHPRI.org website and YouTube channel, where we have lots of great videos and training information. Leaving our library, we hit the bosun's locker. And this is our bosun's locker. And there's Jax and our ship's carpenter, eh, Jax? Howdy. Welcome to the bosun's locker. This is our workspace and also our tool repository for all the deck department. In here, we keep all of our tools and equipment and hardware, so that way we've got a space where everything is located. It also gives us a workshop space with this workbench and that workbench over there that has all of our power tools on it. So that way we've got a place to put everything and a place to work on it as well, so we're not up on deck. Cool. Thanks. I'll see you later. All right. Bye. From Bosun's, we head back aft in the tween decks over to engineering. Let's go see what Alex is doing. Hey, I'm Alex Miller, chief engineer of the Oliver Hazard Perry. Welcome to the engine room. So down here we have two Caterpillar C12 main engines. We got John Deere diesel engines. Uh, they power the generator and they also power the power takeoff for hydraulic applications. We have a potable water system. So that includes potable water pumps, uh, hot water heaters, reverse osmosis machine so we can produce water underway. We have a fire system, uh, consists of a fire pump that also doubles as an emergency bilge pump. We'll leave engineering, 
head back up on deck. And we're on the weather deck. Let's see what Jeff, our bosun's doing. Hi, welcome to OHP's weather deck. I'm Jeff, the bosun, which means I'm in charge of the rig. That's what we have up here. So the rig is everything that's involved in the ship's sails and operation. You see, we have the head rig all the way up forward with our bowsprit and our foremast and our main mist here behind me and the mizzen mast aft. That's a lot of spars. We carry 20 sails when we're fully rigged, 10 squares and 10 fore and afts. We have over seven miles of rigging to operate those sails. That comes down to about 200 different lines on these pin rails that you see. So my job is to make sure that everything's maintained and operational, and that the crew is trained and uh, perfectly competent in their duties. So on a sailing ship, we need the masts and spars and rigging to be able to hold the sails and harness that energy and transfer it into the hull of the ship. For a windmill, it's the sails and mechanisms inside the building that translate that energy from the wind into the grist mill that grinds the flour down below. So how do sails work? For both the Prescott windmill and the Oliver Hazard Perry, let's take a look and see how this all happened. Let's start with our square sails. To set a square sail, we drop the sail, raise the yard arm, pull the sheets in and swing those yards around to capture as much wind as possible in order to create the force required to move our boat forward. Along with our square sails, we have our fore and aft sails. So let's take a look at how they work. And our ship, just like the windmill, uses these fore and aft sails as an additional means of propulsion. As a simple definition of how our fore and aft sails work, the sail has a slight curve to it. The wind cross is faster on the outside of the curve and slower on the inside of the curve, creating a high pressure area on the inside and a low pressure area on the outside. That's creating lift, driving the boat forward or sucking it along. And then the other vectors involved in this are the pressure of the water against the keel, the wind itself, the apparent wind, or the wind you feel when you're on the boat, and the lift, all driving our boat forward. Fore and aft sails, essentially, are just flexible wings. This might be a good time to mention that, you know, the Prescott Windmill and the Oliver Hazard Perry have a lot in common. The Prescott Windmill was built in 1812, and the Oliver Hazard Perry was designed as an 1812 naval frigate originally. Both had multiple homes. The Prescott Windmill moved a number of times before it found its final resting place at the Prescott Farms. And the Oliver Hazard Perry started in Canada and ended up here in Newport as a maritime training ship. The same way we've used our sails to drive our ship, the Prescott Windmill uses its vanes and sails to drive its systems. The miller would come out, rotate the bonnet away from the wind, and bring the first vein down to the ground, climb that vein, and set a sail. He would repeat that for each of the four veins until all the sails were set the way he wanted them for the day. And then he'd walk the bonnet back around into the wind. As the wind crosses over those sails, the vane starts to turn because of the same high pressure and low pressure that we use on our sails. And it creates that lift rotating that vane. The rotational force is transferred through the brake wheel and onto the wallower gear, which is attached to the main shaft going down into the windmill. If we follow that shaft down, we'll come to one of the floors where the miller will feed grain, etc., into the mill. The Prescott windmill has two grindstone pairs. Each pair consists of a runner stone and a bed stone. The bottom stone is called the bed stone. It doesn't move. The runner stone is kept separate off to the side and they use a small hand crane to shift it over, flip it 180 degrees and set it down on top of the bed stone. Once down, it connects to the drive gears and is driven by the wind power and the runner stone rotates. And even today, with our large scale wind turbines, we still use wind to create power. So I'm gonna turn this back over to Jonathan for a close. Take it away, Jonathan. We hope you've enjoyed your visit aboard Rhode Island's flagship, the SSV Oliver Hazard Perry. And we look forward to seeing you on board in person soon. I leave you with this song by Alan Bell, The Windmills. Days go. <laughs>
gone by when the world was much younger. Men harnessed the wind to work for mankind. Seamen built tall ships to sail on the oceans. Landsmen built mills, the corn for to grind. And around and around and around went the big sails, turning the shafts and the great wooden wheels. Creaking and groaning, the millstones kept turning, grinding to flour the corn from the field.